spline mask. The spline mask uses boolean operation to mask splines as its name says. So here I have two splines, a circle and a star. I will enable them for us to see and to create a spline mask. You go to create generator, we choose a spline mask. And we select the two spline, the circle and the star, drag and drop it in the spline mask. Now you select the spline mask, you come to its attribute manager and you select object. You can see on its mode, it has its union. So spline, the circle is spline A and the star is spline B and it's combining them to form one spline. So you can see here we have the, uh, the star and the circle forming one spline. When you select, we go to the mode and change it to A subtract B. That means we are subtracting the star from the circle. If you go in like the mode again, change B subtract A. Same way we are subtracting the circle from the, the star. You can go ahead and do other operations like A and B. So meaning the where it intersects, where like the two of them meet. That's the only point we, we want. So see it cutting out that part. So let me uncheck the spline mark and you can see this part is where we are having with the A and B. There are other operations like A or B meaning either of them. So it keeps the two and a whole lot. So that's what spline mask does. The boolean object. The boolean object work just like the spline mask but with polygons instead of splines. So here I have two objects in the scene, which is a sphere and a cube. So I'll create a Boolean and to create a Boolean, same way we come to create generator bool. And the same way we select the two objects, drag and drop it till we see the white and let go. And you can see if we select the bool instantly, the cube, which is B has been subtracted from the circle, which is A. And we select, we come to its attribute manager. You can see A subtract B. So we are subtracting, subtracting the cube from the sphere. We can come down here, union. Select union. And in this case, the cube and the sphere are one object, which you have to zoom in. So like I have this camera, if I zoom in with the camera, you can see we have them forming one object. If I disable the bool, you can see the cube is in the sphere. So they are forming one object. Let me get out of the camera. And we have other operation A intersect B. And you know the place where they intersect, that's where it forms um, its polygons. And we have A without B, which is the part of the A, which is the sphere without the b like cut out all the part the b is covering cut it out completely it shouldn't form one object so it gives you like a hollow part so i can set it back to a subtract b but unlike the spline mask we don't have b subtract a so to do that operation to cut the sphere out of the cube we can just flip it so we drop the cube on top and now you can see the sphere is cutting so we select the, you can see the sphere is cutting um, the, the cube. So that's how the Boolean object works. The connect object. The connect object basically connects points of objects within certain tolerance level. So here I have a cube in a subdivision surface grouped in faces. So let me unhide it and you can see every face is separate. So if I enable the subdivision object, you can see it separately smoothens every face. But to connect all the faces together to be one object, we, we use the connect object. So we go to create, generate and select connect. Now we can either do drag the null object straight into the connect object or select the faces and drag them into the connect object. Either of them work. Now let's put that one in the subdivision surface. And now you can see it connects the, all the faces together to be one, like just like a cube. And now the subdivision surface smoothings it like a cube. Simple. If I disable the connect object, you can see how it, that what happens and with it enable how it works. 
So that's how basically the connect ob object work. It connects points on separate object to make them one object. Symmetry. The symmetry object basically does what its name says. So it creates an exact copy of the object you put in and mirrors it on an axis. So in this case, I have a sphere here, which is a, a hemisphere. When I create um, a symmetry object by going to create, generate symmetry, I drop the sphere in and nothing happens. And because on its axis, it's mirroring it wrongly. So we come to mirror plane, choose um, its, uh, its X, Z axis, and it creates the other parts of the sphere for us. So with it, we can actually go in and manipulate the sphere and everything that we do affect the other parts. So we can make this editable by pressing C, select it of the points, can move it up and you see everything that we do down here happens down there. I have another example here, which is a, a half part of a human face. You can actually simply go in to the image. So go into a, a generators, select symmetry, drag and drop it in and it creates the other half for us on the ZY axis. So basically same way we can actually select that one too and move it and everything that we do to it. So it's very, very good for modeling symmetric objects. So that's what the symmetry object does. The instance object. The instance object basically creates a duplicate of an object and with all of its properties tied to the object except skill, rotation and position. So I can come in here and create a, a figure, make it a bit bigger. And to create an instance object, we make sure the object you want to create an instance of is selected, which is the figure. So the figure is selected and you come to create, generate and choose instance. So now you can see if you select the instance and come down to its attributes manager, it shows a slot here, which says a reference object. And we have in here the figure. So it means it automatically dropped in the figure here. If we had not done that, which we can do, we can, if we had the instance created without selecting the figure, we can actually select the figure here and drag and drop it and it will, it, it will work. Unlike the other generators, you don't have to make the object you want to make instance of a child. So now our instance is created, we can select it and drag and drop it, bring it this side too. No, so it has, you can control its own position, it can, its own scale and everything and rotation. So the instance of basically creates a duplicate. So here I have a scene here, which just a city in here. I have lighting and get out of, you can see it's several light, but it's just one light with multi, a lot of instances. I've created du duplicates of instances and everything I do here affects um, the other. So including even color. So if I change to change the color here, the material here to like, let's say yellow and see, I ch change the only the original one, but it affects everything. If I should select, let's say um, this thing and move it down, you can see every the other ones are also moving in. If I should take this one and probably make it um, adjust it, you can see it's affecting the other one. So the instance object basically creates a duplicate, but it, it references the original object. The array object. The array object basically creates copies of objects and arrange them in like circular or spherical form. So I can simply come in here and let's say create a cube, make it a little smaller. And to create array object, same way we go to our create um, generator array. Now we make the cube a child of the array and instantly it creates a multiple dupl duplicates and arrange it in a circular form. So I can increase coming up to use properties and basically increase it um, maybe work with amplitude and later um, um, maybe reduce its frequency here let me make it like three you can see we are getting something yeah increase the copies and maybe sometimes increase the frequency and now automatically gives it animation so if i should hit play 
you know it gives it some nice motion in there so basically that's what it does you can play around with it to create nice and interesting stuff the atom array the atom array basically takes an object and converts all its edges to cylinders and its points to spheres so for instance if i should come here and create a cube a normal cube and now i'm going to my create generator atom array and make the cube a child of the atom array you can see if you get closer you can see all the points on the cube has turned into spheres and the edges are now cylinders if i select the atom array and come you can control the size of the cylinder here and the size of the sphere here the cylinder can be bigger than the sphere though and you can control its subdivisions in here as well so even if i come into the cube and increase the segment on y you can see it's creating extra cylinders here as well here as well any object that you place in it basically so if i come in here and i take let's say the landscape make it a little bigger and maybe reduce the segment so that can be easy now let's delete the cube and make the outer array you can see it creates use the same takes the edges and use it and take them as cylinders so you can increase it reduce it everything so that's how the atom array also basically works the meta ball the meta ball sort of creates a mesh around a point of objects and also on splines as well so if i should come into create generate and choose meta ball and i should add like a spline see instantly it creates some organic mesh around it and you can select the meta ball and come to its attributes probably reduce the um, editor subdivision to make it smooth and you can increase or re uh, reduce the whole value to also get it a bit tighter or closer to the object and all that same way if i drop in let's say a cube let me delete the spline and put the cube in you see it creates something on its like points because there is not enough points in the cube so if i should increase the segment now you see what's happening so it sort of creates like some organic mesh around um the points or, or splines and where the points are closer it melts them together to give it like you know one object feel and a very organic look that's what it basically that's so why i can actually come in and add another object let's see um the sphere and put it in as well and now if i move the sphere you can see where it's getting apart it kind of merges it together because of you know like there is a threshold that it's working in so it sort of give it that feel if i should make the sphere bigger you know you get that feeling of like it being like liquidy or something of that sort you can actually add in spline as well you know move it on the side and you see you know what we have so yeah the metal sort of gives you organic shapes using the spline and points of, of objects the remesh what the remesh does is basically as his name says remesh object so here i have the meta ball like we created earlier and you know you can see there's so many um polygons in it and i want to remesh it but keep the polygon simple so if i come to create and um, generate and choose my remesh now drag and drop the um meta ball into it and you wait you wait for a while and to calculate and once it's done it will give us a low poly of the same mesh so we select it now you can see we have like a low poly like as in reduced a bit and it's if you come to the remesh and it check its attributes manager you can see it's set to polygon type to quad so it tries as much as possible to keep it um quads for us so that it will be clean mesh I mean, you can actually reduce the mesh so we can come to the mesh density reduce it to like let's say 46 or it can even go down let's say 20 
and it will do the calculation and now you see it reduces it a bit more we can actually go more let's say five and you see it gives us as low as possible but try to keep the shape of the object as well we can actually change it to if we don't want it in quads we can also change it to triangles and it will give us triangles simple and still keep the shape trying to keep the shape of the object for us so that's basically what the remesh also does the polygon reduction object the polygon reduction object also basically works like the remesh but in this case it doesn't try to keep the um, polygons in quads or triangles so it just tries to reduce the um the polygons of the object so i have the meta ball here again so i'll come to the create and go to a generate and choose polygon reduction now make the meta ball a child of it and they select it see nothing happens so it's calculating and now you see it has reduced the shape but it doesn't try to keep it quads or tries or anything you just try to reduce it and keep the shape so if you go in and increase it to so basically we've reduced the um the polygons 90 percent so you can see reduction strength 90 percent if we increase it to let's say 95 it goes down a bit if we put it to 100 I mean nothing will be left so at least it should be like 99 or something so you see reduce it to its barest minimum but not try to keep it quads or anything so it basically works the same but this one very organic and doesn't keep any quads or tries the relief object basically takes an image and try to recreate it like giving it mesh in 3d using the bright and dark parts of the image so if I should come in and create and um, generate relief and now come to textures and choose like one of these image snow you can see let me actually let's preview the image so if I open the image see it's just black background with white text written relief and now it tries to mimic it here in um, 3d so if I should probably I should leave change the orientation to um, let's say minus Z and you can see what's actually happening here so it's trying to pull the push the white part out and push the black parts backwards so if I should go in here I know let me change the size that's the size of our original images 1920 by 1080 so here we have the size of our original image and now let's increase the segment so we'll go to like 500 by 500 and here you see it perfectly creates um the image we had here but with polygons perfectly we can actually come down here and choose a spherical and it will give us the um round but actually we create it on the round end i have another image which you can actually use like here the spare one and that one gives us if we preview that one you can see very bright a little bit brighter like so eventually gets very dark so we open use the image and select open no again now you can see what it's basically done with that image as well so basically that's what the relief object does the vectorizer the vectorizer basically also uses image and like the bright parts and the dark part of an image to create splines so if i should come here again and go to create generate generator and choose vectorizer now same we come to texture like the relief object texture and i'll, I'll use the same image the relief image so i'll choose the one now say open now in this case choose no and now it tries to create the you so the bright part will be created like a spline so it tries to recreate the text relief for us basically that's what it does so you can actually go in here depending on how uh, dense you want it it tries to fit it so we put it to one and it gets closer i mean the sharper your image the the, be the better so you can actually go in and put it to zero and you see it tries to mimic it you can actually refine your uh, refine it later or do like make your image quite sharper so that it can actually fit but basically all it does is it takes the bright part and convert it into spline data you can actually put it into like let's say extrude or something and now you have 3d uh, text 
from the image basically that's what the vectorizer also does